And we're live. Welcome to the Crash Lab. We got Jamie Levy today with us, Matt Wilson, CJ Kim, as usual. Um, Jamie, welcome. Thank you for having me. Yeah. So, what's up? A uh, little chilly out there today, but uh, enjoying the walk over here. So, thanks for the invite. Uh, I'm ready to get going here. So, this looks like a great setup here, and I uh, appreciate the invite. Yeah. Well, Looking forward for, to it. Thanks for coming in. And it's, I, you know, it, I guess like we we've got a history, uh, shared history, Pine Tree Days, all that. Matt, me, you, um, and uh, I mean, you're building a mine now. That's pretty crazy. It is pretty crazy. I've come a long way. Uh, kind of wish uh, things were a little bit different now. It's a uh, kind of uh, not the best market right now. But let's just go back to Pine Tree. Did I'm trying to remember? Did did I bring you in there? Did I? Get your interview there. And yeah, I yeah you for sure. Oh. Before before the interview, you like gave me a warning downstairs. I don't remember that. You yeah, said, I think like, so. This might go this way, and if it does, don't be offended. <laughs> I was like, okay, thanks for the pep talk, and then I went up and I had my interview. <laughs> but that was that was the first interview, right? That was in that 2011. Was in, that was in so 11. Those, yeah. So Jamie and I sat on the trading desk at Pine Tree together for three, four years. Something I, like that. I think anyway, we used to have the, we have the, used to have a room that was smaller than this this podcast room, and yeah. there was four of us in there. <laughs> and that oh, was man. that was how I cut my chops in in the in the space was in that room and listening to Jamie make deals around the street and um and then yeah I guess that that was when you that was when uh, we had an analyst opening when Craig left, yeah, and that was when Jamie brought Denny and then you were like no. <laughs> I took the job. I know. I took the job. I was like, yes. No, and I I'm told Jerry coming. and Jerry's like, you idiot. Take this, take the forms home, review them, sign them later. And then Jim Longshore and the extra gold guys uh, called me and they're like, hey, we're at Turf Bar. So I went there and they're like, uh, we got a bunch of money. You want to come back to Ghana and run the, run the drilling? Oh, yeah. Uh, with Eve. And I was like, I mean, and I, I wrote an email. I'm like, uh, thanks. No, thanks. <laughs> but you were there for how long? At, at the end, uh, I ended up coming in 2013, so I was there uh, up until post. Okay, because yeah, I think unwind. you came in so when I left. 2015, mid 2015. Yeah, I think it was a like revolving right. door. I yeah. left, you came in. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it was uh, it was a good history. I, I you know respected being there, but I'm glad I left. <laughs> Man, what did you do? So just for the the listeners, like your your history is so interesting because you're now running. It's like a real mine that's being financed and building and. Um, it's always interesting to know like the background of people. So what where how'd you get there? What where'd you start? How'd that go? There's Union and we we're just chatting with Dane and Yeah, so I was never at Union. I originally started as uh, I guess at this firm called T D Waterhouse. I used to be operator. Good afternoon, how can I help you? <laughs> and then that developed into working with my dad at a firm called Canada Taurus or Canadian Taurus. Then we went into Taurus Capital. And then after that, um, got the invite to go work with Sheldon at Pine Tree. Were you investing in mining at that time at Taurus Capital? Uh, there was some mining happening back in the late, when was it? Would have been late 90s, early mm. 2000s. It was mostly tech back then. But just when I got out of um, out of Taurus, uh, went over to Sheldon, I guess it was probably around 2007. And that was kind of near the end of the gold run. And it was a good experience, uh, but it was we were already a little too late. I think it kind of blew up. And that was when like Donato was there, Donato right? Donato was yeah. there. It, it was it was a great environment. I mean, you remember the Rillian <laughs> was getting taken. Uh, Rillian was having its run. Petrolifera, Gold Eagle, and Cisco was doing crazy. I think it. You know, they bought it for ten cents. I think they sold it for like thirty two. Bill, or sorry, uh, thirty-two dollars a share. I don't remember the That's history of that. Crazy. Like back in 2012, 2013, Arillion. That was the one that uh, Marty Walter had with Mark Henderson. Um, oh, the, the, the Argentinian. One. No, it was Argentinian silver. Uh, uh, I know. Aquila. Yeah, Aquila. Yeah, Aquila. Yeah, Aquiline. Yeah, Aquiline. Yeah, yeah, Aquiline. Yeah, Aquiline. Like there were some really good deals that yeah. were happening. Like stocks used to move, and now it's just. A weird market. So, so Matt, so we for the long way to answer yet. Yeah, so I went from there, and then uh, Carrie Knoll approached me. Actually, funny story, right around the corner at Young and King, uh, with Tom Arbrodovich, who I've been friends with for for, for a, a long time. Tom introduced me to Carrie, and Carrie's like, "I want you to come run this company called Darnley Bay." And I'm like, "Okay, what is it?" I'm thinking I'm hot shit. Oh, can I swear here? Yeah, you okay, can totally okay. swear. <laughs> okay, sorry. Um, and then I'm like, "Oh, I could do whatever I want. I just from Pine Tree, I could pick whatever job I want." And then Carrie's like, it's uh, strongest isolated gravity, gravity anomaly in the world. I'm like, okay, sounds interesting. Where is it? He goes, 
Politic Northwest Territories. I'm like, where, that, where is that? And he's like, it's up here. And I'm like, where's that? And it's right on the Beaufort Sea. I'm like, okay, what, what, what do I got to lose? I got nothing, you know. So I took that job, uh, went around the street, got uh, I think around a million dollars. We did some magneto telurics, some geophysics. We found some targets, but couldn't drill them. They were deep targets. So, um, you know, then we looked for another project, got Canadian Arrow. Had a what was the name of it? You were talking about Ken, uh, Ken, Ken, Ken Ridge. Cambridge, Cambridge. Ken, Cambridge. We took that around the street. Couldn't raise any money for nickel. This is in yeah. 2014. Pretty soft market. Then uh, lucky zinc started to run, and we were able to get the old Pine Point uh, Kamenko asset out of receivership from Renvest. <clears throat> we purchased that for I believe it was six million dollars. Uh, funny story. We were marketing in the street, and uh, this guy Glenn Milne. I think we all know him, Gunner. Yep over at Canaccord, said, you got to go meet Lucas, you got to go meet Lucas. So we went over to Lundin Mining over on King Street, and um, and Lucas wasn't there, but it was a bunch of his people, and these guys were crapping on this deal. Why would Kamenko have walked away if it's a good project? Why a good project? And I'm like, okay, I guess that was a bad meeting. And Kerry said to me in the elevator, he goes, sometimes the worst meetings are the best meetings. So a couple hours later, doing something, I don't know, walking my dog. Glenn keeps calling me, and I'm like, Glenn, you're pocket dialing me. He goes, no, I want to tell you something. Lucas wants to put in $3 million, your lead order. I'm like, holy wow. shit. Yeah, and wow. so I guess it wasn't That's good enough for Lundy call. Mining. So Lucas got in, and then we ended up putting out a PEA, and then a Cisco Metals ticket out, and then we're telling a Cisco, you know, we want a spin co. Sure, we'll have a spin co, but they had a tax problem if they were to get spin out shares so they didn't want any shares and then we ended up getting um this amazing marathon palladium project from uh sabania i reached out to the guy in linkedin of all places uh to say what are you doing with this he goes i don't even know we don't even know we have it i'm like yeah you have it when you purchase stillwater because sabania bought stillwater in 2017 and they're like okay well make us a deal and then they said there was a data room and we looked at the data room there's nothing in there and we ended up buying it for eight million dollars that's wow. Awesome. Yeah. Now you have a $1.2 billion nav on it. Yes. <clears throat> uh, we did two feasibility <laughs> studies on it. Um, we just released another feasibility study. Even more, we had wheat and precious metals. We sold a stream to them for $240 million. <laughs> We've drawn down to $40 million of that so far. Uh, so I feel pretty privileged to have That's wheat great. and precious. Yeah. That's awesome. And then we just announced a mandate letter and term sheets from a syndicate of banks led by Export Development Corporation in Canada, SOCGen and ING. And trust me, commercial banks are very difficult to deal with. Mm -hmm. Independent technical report here, Equator principle, so much, so much work, so much lawyers. Um, and we ended up getting five, four hundred million dollars US from them. Haven't drawn it down yet. That wow. will be on fully permitted, but we're we're moving this project the project along. And you're building. We're building, yes. I don't think uh, I'll do it again, but I still have my hair. <laughs> I still have my hair. You still look young. You look good. I you don't know, know you haven't that. lost it yet. Well, there's Botox. There's some <laughs> hair transplants. A couple little plugs. Yeah. yeah I have been to good. Turkey yet. I might be going there soon. I hear yeah, that's I a good a little trip to Turkey. I need to yeah. gonna throw a turkey on mine here. <laughs> Anyways, it, 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 it's a great, great, you know, the, the mining space is a lot of fun. I know you guys do mining, you do everything, but I really enjoy the mining spaces from the conferences to the people, you know, talking to geos and as I yeah. mentioned, you know, mining engineers, you know, I always wish I had that. What are those things called? The little pinky rings that they have. <laughs> like, it's nice to meet all these people that are very successful. And I think we were talking, I was talking to someone earlier, I was at the gym at the BMO conference and I'm looking at the guy next to me and I'm like, holy shit, that's Robert Freeland next to me on the treadmill. And I'm like, that's kind of cool to see a mining legend like that. So I heard he's what on the speed was he running? I thought, I thought he what was speed was he running? That guy. Oh, was he like six or was he? I uh, don't, don't know. He was wearing some fu <laughs> funky looking clothes, so I just looked away. <laughs> I was going to pitch him my deal, but I decided to let him work out. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, do you still have a pulse in the market? Because I mean, at one point you were trading all. You know, obviously you ear was to the ground. You knew all, like, what everybody was up to, and where all the bodies were buried, and you know what everybody was doing you know like are you still plugged into that or now that you're doing this you're just immersed in this and you just like left well that unfortunately or fortunately enough i still invest in deals so i do yeah. have a, a a bit of pulse on the street do you I mean, still have a drawer of certs i do have a drawer you of can certs. open and you're like yes. what's in here yes <laughs> yes that's why i pay a lot for my accountant but i do have a lot of certs not as yeah. many as i used to because now you have drs statements so a little bit better but um i i would say the pulse on the street at least, at least my vision is it, there is no buy side, yeah, um, and and it's gone. I mean, back when we were at Pine Tree together, it was us. It was <laughs> Eric Sprott. Yep. It was Ned Dundee. 
Um, and then if you're lucky enough, you'd get Century. Uh, so you get Kevin And you even McLean. had like Rab Capital back then. You even had like yeah. the London guys, like they're still coming in, right? Yeah. Or Alpha, Alpha, or um, Steve, Steve Palmer's. Yeah, they were, they were a little smaller. Came they were a little, smaller, but they were still They, they were still there, but yeah. I mean, there was a top four. Then you would have, I guess, you know, Jones Gable. Uh, Don Ross would do a few deals. And then you would have uh, Senior, Pat, uh, Sheridan Senior. I think you know him quite well yep. over at Northfield. So there was a few guys. Now there's nothing. So when you want to go try to get your deal... Um, finished. You got to go find it yourself, and there's, yeah. the buy side isn't there. I mean, even you, even you could go take it to Barty, and Barty could maybe help out too, or he would take you uh, take the company and a few dollars out of it. But at least he would help you raise the money. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, I mean, he would he would help you. Yeah, there's just no one out there. It's all mom and pop retail. Now going back though, I mean, it's an interesting because I mean, you must have seen a similar climate to this the first time around. Do you think it was ever this bad? Like when you were. In your past life, when you were doing um, the first place you worked with your dad, uh, yeah, I mean, the, the, you were more in technology and stuff. Like mining, probably wasn't anything it, anybody talked it, about for a it, while at that time. Was but there, it? Were, there were active managers. Now it doesn't seem like there's any active manager. It's all passive. It's all ETF. It's all yeah. Why, why invest in generation mining when I can invest in GDXJ? Yeah, or, or invest in that. Or why do I need this? I'll go invest in a, a gold producer, or I'll get my exposure here. I mean, do you remember back in the day, Noron had that had his run? $12 uh, on the well, 2 million tons. But then you yeah. would have all these ambulance chasers, I used to call them. Yeah. What were they called? The area plays. Area yeah, yeah, yeah. plays. Yeah, yeah, plays. You'd have like Spider, KWG. All these guys were coming out there. Uh -huh. and they all had, like, It brings back great memories. Yeah, like, <laughs> it, it, and it used to be that market that uh, someone would hit. And then everybody around there, I'm a long strike. <laughs> you're 40 kilometers away. Yeah, right. you're, you know, or you're different. Yeah, we used to do that. Remember the Yukon rush, yeah. the first one? Yeah. We used to just be like, all right, so Kamenax hitting. And then we're like, like all right, close to it? Let's, yeah. let's find a 50-kilometer radius and buy everything. Yeah. <laughs> that was our move. What was that That's oil and gas too. deal we did at Pine Tree? Which one? It was the one in the U.S. where they had like hundreds of thousands of acres and we're trying to put a dollar yes, by. Yes, Primary Petroleum. Yes, Mike that was Marindino. A, yes, good with memory. The primary Petroleum Pie. That was a good one. He used to send yeah, pictures pie. with like binoculars <laughs> looking at like the neighboring claims. Look, it's flaring. The gas is flaring. <laughs> and there was nothing there. It was uh, so crazy, yeah. it, but it was a different environment. That was worth $200 million. One I mean, point. you still see it though. You still see the closeology stuff. Like if you look at Red Lake, for instance, with Great Bear, when Great Bear made their discovery, for instance, then there was like all of those and it's always the same guys. But who's buying it now? I think that was, no one's buying it. That's the big difference. Like yeah. you don't have, like Newfound it gold. used to be, there was a you'd have bunch. Eric, Ned, that was the thing. Yeah. You had Sheldon, you had all these guys, but then also they, there's PA playing funds and then there's buying in the market and. That was the biggest, that was seems to me like the biggest difference. There's no buying in the market anymore. But there must have been a tipping point for when mining was boring before that boom, where none of the money was really interested in that space at all, or even watching so it. So Sheldon was doing biotech. Right, that's what I'm right? saying. Like, that, that, like, you go back that far, yeah. you know, dot .com and all that. Like, nobody gave a shit about mining then. Yeah, but like, what, what was it? <coughs> uh, you know, the Hemlo Gold Rush, and I think it was in 80. Here's a good story. Kerry told me a story. I could get the, the story a little bit uh, broken, but <coughs> he was a reporter for the Northern Miner. He interviewed Murray Pezum, and I guess he had a business card in his pocket. And after he met Murray Pezum, he's like, I got to buy the stock. Murray was one of the best stock promoters. So let's call it 1982. Kerry said he had $200 in his bank account. He hit his credit card for $200. So he put $400 down on at a dollar. Just happened to be at a dollar. He got a call back from his broker at the time, which is his business partner, now Ian McDonald. And um, Ian's like, it's at $2. Like two hours later, you should sell it. So Carrie's like, well, I just doubled my money. I'm going to sell it. Later on that day, it closed at $3. I think that week it closed at $10 or $20 and eventually got up to $34 later that month. So stock had a 34x in a month. Like that doesn't happen anymore. Yeah. You know, I mean, we had diamond fields. I mean, most of your yeah. listeners, have they ever read, uh, what was the, uh, Norm the book he had? Yeah, the, uh, the Never Rest Under Your Oars or whatever it was called. Mm -hmm. Like that's yeah. a great book for people to read about mining, about how Freeland you know, jockeyed, was it Inco and Tech and whatever it might have been to, to, to sell, like for $4 billion or whatever the number was. It was still 10 years so away from production at the yeah. time, right? Mm -hmm. And we just don't see that anymore. But, I mean, then there was a diamond rush. When was the diamond rush in the 90s? Up in the NWT? Mm, I think it was later than that even. 
Was it okay? Maybe, maybe. no, maybe it, maybe it was the 90s. And then in the 2000s, we had the uranium boom. And yeah. I know Phil was up here. I was listening to his podcast to see what insight he would have. But uranium <laughs> was huge when we were a pine tree. That's yeah. what built. That really yeah. built. That was that yeah. was the Jim Dine stuff. Remember? Well, that's what you were saying. Like a lot of guys that we see ar- around today, with they, tons of dough, like they hit the jackpot. They made. They uranium. made their yeah. 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 All in uranium first, and then to gold after. But yeah. it's always um, that Australian deal that everyone made all their money on. What was it? Paladin. Paladin. Yeah. Yeah. Because it was like it. It was like a thirty thousand percent gain for all of those guys. Mega uranium was worth two billion dollars. In two thousand and seven, yeah. off of Lake Maitland, Ma- Lake Mega was worth two billion. Yeah, something like two billion dollars. Wow. Yeah, some insane number like that. There was one point where Pine Tree was like a billion and a half dollars. I think when you joined, yeah, it was pretty big. And then Mega was like two, and then Brownstone, Brownstone was worth a couple hundred million at one point for the oil and gas stuff. It was wild. That was just all, but that was because, like you're saying, you had you had these huge wins like petrolifera this oil thing in argentina 30 dollars from 10 cents gold eagle to dollar like aurelian like you had these things the videos on youtube about like people being pissed that aurelian got sold are still some of my favorite things I've ever, I've gold eagle's seen. a fun one i, I want to get like mike <clears throat> leskovic or something in to talk about that one too a little bit because i know they had uh that's a crazy one they like they didn't drill that many holes they drilled mm-hmm. like a handful of holes right they and then they public. sold it yeah they weren't public for that long like, it was like a brand new deal. They drilled yeah. a few holes. It, like, but do you think that that? So you've gone through the couple cycles. What would do you think that that comes? So the venture is at. I was just looking at this. So 2018. I look back to 2018. You're probably raising some money in 2018, right? So 2018. I remember you're raising money for land yeah. bank or what, right? 2018 was a horrible year. Like I remember 2018 and resources. 2015, 2016. Do you know what TSXV is compared to 20? Like down 30 percent from wow. 2018. It's like today. Yeah. yeah. Really. <laughs> yeah. So wow. what what changes that? I mean, metals are up. Gold's two thousand. Copper's yeah. near four dollars. What does anything? What happens? I, I mean, I don't know, but I mean, don't, I mean, we all agree that the crypto market, the marijuana market, um, not to make excuses, but that took away a lot, a lot of, of the, capital. A lot of capital. Yeah, that's fair. Um, and and to be honest with you, I think these machines and this decimalization and. Um, I, I just don't think people really are, are into it. I think, you know, if you look at lithium, Patriot Metals, yep. Lyft, I mean, mm-hmm. some of these ones are moving and they really have nothing other than, I mean, great intercepts, but there's still $2 billion market cap pa- Patriot. And I think it's a great deposit, but is it worth that now? I, I, I don't have an answer, but, you know, God bless them. And it's I hope definitely it gone out. ahead of itself. Like yeah. all that whole lithium space is completely unglued from... In and fairness, they did just drill like 200 meters of 2% lithium. It was pretty cool. Oh, I, like, no, <laughs> and, and I'm not dismissing any of that. I just yeah. mean like, the, the, like there's no like math. But isn't, but or, or is it that that actually makes sense and then everything else is low? What well, that could make like, sense. Like yeah. that, like that, that project is like, well, that like probably you, works. Like think about lithium on like a copper equivalent, right? So if it's like, you know, eight times what copper is worth or four times, what, let's say four times what copper is worth. That's like drilling 200 meters of 8% copper. Can you imagine drilling 200 meters of 8% copper? Be a hero, mm-hmm. yeah. So, but, well, for sure. But I, I remember know, talking it, it, to Tom, and he was telling me a million hit. I think it was two hundred and thirty-five meters of four grams gold. Right. I mean, from yeah. I think it was from surface. Or my guess is from. But I mean, that's an amazing hole. And stock goes from sixty cents to three fifty. Like we just haven't seen those hits. I mean, Philo's been a pretty remarkable story. I mean, yeah. thousand yeah. meter intercepts of. Two percent equivalent, yeah, yeah for but sure. It's nice, but it's it's going to be difficult. It's going to be billions of dollars capex. But if anybody can do it, it'll be the Lundians. Yeah, that's a great but, district. Yeah, yeah no, I mean, there's still there's still things like Newfounds, well, on Newfound a, on and a, Great on a Bear tear and Great Bear and and uh, like there's been some there's been some discoveries and stuff. But you're right. I think there's just I guess what I'm trying to figure <laughs> out is what convinces people that give zero shits about mining and mining stocks to suddenly give a shit about mining stocks. Like, does it take observing these ridiculous wins, these like cryptocurrency, almost NFT style overnight successes to convince like their average retail bear to say, Oh, you know what? I'm going to go back into this space now. Yeah. Cause that's why I was interested in Jamie's story. Like, like well, think, what let's... made him like suddenly get into mining if he wasn't doing it before? Like did it happen as a reaction to watching all these people make money, trading mining names and then being like, fuck, I want to get in on that, that game or. Yeah. Like... You moved from a fairly generalist role into mining, right? So. But but just to, to, to go back is, I mean, I think two things that will move a market will be higher commodity prices. We haven't really seen that yet. For instance, copper, everyone says copper is going to five, six bucks. It's, it's 
teetering at four dollars. So mm-hmm. we need a sustained, um, you yeah. know, higher prices, and more importantly, we need a discovery. Like there's been very few and far between because there's been no money for exploration. So newfound gold was a great discovery, um, you know, philo, but there's not hasn't been that many. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and not I re- a lot. And I think a discovery will bring in an influx of money, and we just haven't seen that in a while. And so, may, maybe sir, some of this critical metal money coming in there, who, if the government could help out. But it just seems to be difficult to get that nice drill hole where it actually moves the stock, where people are like, oh, I'm up two cents. I got to go sell my stock. Yeah. And I just feel like, and also these warrants are just killing our stocks as well. Mm-hmm. You know, people are just demanding. What are your thoughts on flow through? Do you think that helps or hurts? The flow through funds, the way they're operating, that is a primary source of income right now in a lot of these stocks as a I, trader. As a trader, well, it depends on who has the flow through. If they're selling it as soon as they get it, it's well, not the same players. Let's say it's Maple, it's you Mark know West. Mark West. Well, you know, you know, they're selling their stock, so you have to make 100%. sure. So you have to make sure you're gonna. Um, but at the same time, like, so there's a place though. I mean, when you think about yes. it, right? So it's like, so as a trader, you just want to be aware of who's in it. I mean, there are there are a pl- like there are a range of funds, right? You got to figure out who has two years. Like who has a rollover who can hold for two years? Who's going to make sure that they mm-hmm. treat your stock with respect, so to speak? But even in ones it, that don't, right? You still know what you're. It's like you need money to make a discovery. There's no respect. I mean, 119 <laughs> days after closing, they're selling it. I mean, well, yeah. as soon as it's free Fair. trading, they're selling it. So I mean, flow through will work if you have an end buyer. If you want to do the charity route, put it in the ground, and then you could raise the money at a premium to the market. You know, you know how much? Uh, what percentage of flow through accounts for all exploration dollars raised in Canada? No idea. Eighty percent. Wow. Really? Yeah. So wow. People are taking advantage of that tax. I mean, well, it is a really I mean, don't ask yourself why these companies yeah. have shitty liquidity and or aren't performing. I mean, it's a fucking mountain of stock that you. But have how to can you? To get... But but what's the alternative? I don't have any money. We just no, we just went sure. through like we don't have buyers. So either you're like, well, I have this asset that's really great and I love it, and you're like running it, and you know how you drink the Kool Aid on your own asset, and you're like, I love this yeah. thing, and it's gonna work, and you're like, okay, so I can either get. 200 grand from people that I know and do nothing or I can get two million dollars actually do some work right mm-hmm. and then you're like well I'll figure out the stock later so yep. again it all it all comes back to I think that it used to be I mean when I joined Pine Tree and we were sitting on the desk together it would be like the flow through premiums right so if you're doing a flow through deal you're 30 40 percent premium to market because of because of that tax break so the selling was different now flow through deals are almost 10. done at market. Yeah, it's like, like it's 10% almost the same. is like the maximum. And by the time that you actually announce the deal and your stock sells off and you get this thing, like your flow the flow through deal is basically just at market what it is. So Yeah. The charitable is different because the charitable you're placing the back end with people. So it's like, you know, you're going to your buy side institutions that are your big yeah. supporters and saying, Okay, I want to raise this money, and then you're doing it at a massive premium for the charity and they just take the back end. So that's different. But that doesn't come back at you the same way. But no. we but we do need a discovery. Yeah, I, that's I mean, fair. I, you that's know, a good point. D- discovery. Yeah. We need higher sustained prices. I mean, gold goes over two thousand dollars. I mean, I don't know what it is in mm-hmm. Canadian dollars, but let's just call it twenty eight hundred dollars. I mean, gold companies should be making a crap load of money, Canadian yeah. companies, and let's hope that their earnings get better, and then um, they could start looking to, to to invest in some assets again. I mean, I think I saw. Some are buying someone, uh, some other piece of crap up in the Yukon, putting some money into it, like a, a senior. <laughs> and I just haven't seen it in a while, but they're going to start coming in there. And Dude, then there's the pro- a lot of that going on, I man. I was, I, I could count on like two hands right now the number of deals I've seen in the last like three months from seniors stepping into these weird juniors. Like, not, I won't say they're crappy because they're not crappy. Like, they're well, B2 okay did the snow, deals. Well, B2 did Snow Line. Right. Okay. Then I saw Newcrest just gave to Metallica, like that the Wisconsin was a, that was deal. A, that Newcrest was a, just yeah. gave, which is, which was bananas to me because I was like, not not because it wasn't. They drilled this 850 meter hole of 0.4 mm-hmm. percent equivalent or something like that, right? Yeah. And like the last five meters was five percent copper. Yeah. And uh, but yeah. that that was and interesting. That Brick, Brixton in with BHP, I think. With BHP, yeah. that's Alamos right. going into your fit. Your, into your into uh, Orford again. Into my my top pick there, yeah, Orford. <laughs> Manitou. And no, no, no yeah. Orford up okay. in the top. Yeah, but Alamos acquiring Man- Manitou's and. I, I think they couldn't give them any more money, so maybe that's yeah. why they took it out. <laughs> They're already a big shareholder. But uh, yeah, it's yeah. A weird space. So you need new something new discovery. But that was the theme I heard. I, I wasn't at BMO, but it seemed to be that that was a, a big theme, which is that everyone was like, "There's not a lot that's new." Yeah. So I mean, you got the streaming companies now, which are 
could be hurting the market as well because it's impairing your project down the road, mm -hmm. but they are giving you that money now. So our deal with Wheaton was amazing. Our cost of capital was around 5%. So That's it awesome. was it was a fabulous deal, but it's they do a lot of due diligence. Like when we went up to site and we had some other streaming companies that were up there, Wheaton was out there mm -hmm. and they're like, we want this drill hole, this drill hole, this drill hole. And we're like, yeah, but they're not mineralized. We want to look at that mineralized core. Mm. They want to make sure that everything was there. And our poor, you know, geologists or whoever we have working up there, they were bringing out lugging All core, moving, the core lug, boxes, lugging core boxes for like, like two. Psych, we don't actually care. <laughs> no, 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 they actually did care. And it was the due diligence that they did. It, it was a lot different than when we worked together where it was kind of, invest and then investigate yeah um it would just be like a yeah we'll buy that we'll buy that we'll buy that and it was it's a different environment now people are smart they look at the deals they they think differently so when you're dealing with a streaming company they have a reputation they need to make sure their investments are good you have the private equity guys which have kind of hurt the market as well because they're really cost of capital is 20 percent. i mean that's an expensive cost of capital to, to borrow money from those guys so you you can use them but Sometimes they're gonna hurt you, and we know if you hear of those. the stat. Did you hear the stat on no. Silver Wheaton? So they say that uh, uh, I think it's like eighty-five percent of the companies that have done deals with Silver Wheaton for streaming deals have gone bankrupt. How is that possible? If they're, I'm like, make, make that up. I don't know. I'm they like, just gave him two hundred million dollars. Like, no, no, no. I'm just, I'm just thinking about it. Like, cause, like I, 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 I saw Gary, death, I saw no, Gary Brown present or something. I, I think they, I look at the numbers here. I think they make like three million dollars a day or a million. Like they're phenomenal. Yeah, they're phenomenal, and they do, and they do a really, really good deep dive. And it's a big, like, I mean, honestly, a lot of people don't appreciate that. Like, if if a group like Silver Wheaton, or Triple Flag. Franco Nevada. If any of those three get involved in a project and do a streaming deal, the level of detail, the proctology exam that goes on before they get in, they know exactly. Like they don't, they don't well, screw it's around. It's huge numbers. It's huge numbers. They it's don't screw numbers. around. But even those for us on for Triple Flag, when they wrote Triple a small check crazy. into Goldspot back in the day, and they wanted to do due diligence on us, it was. Every no, like board minute meeting, yeah, like all the minutes like, from every meeting for the last like three years, like yeah. it was like insane. Did you like your exam, by the way? You didn't tell <laughs> us about it. Yeah, it was, it was okay. Uh, <laughs> Jesus, they they tell me I'm getting shorter and fatter, and <laughs> tell me my blood pressure is getting higher, but they're about to stick a finger up my ass. That's <laughs> yeah. you know typically how that yeah. goes. But the the streaming model, they for the last ten years, I bet they did awesome because it's a very predatory model. It's almost the last resort of capital. And then what's left for equity holders in the in the deals that uh, they funded? Not necessarily there. though. It depends on the deal, right? So, I, I would think that because if you're if you're a polymetallic project, like mm -hmm. like actually, then the stream can really work well, right? Because if it's not your primary metal that yeah, you're yeah, then it's totally right? fine. I mean, like yeah. your economics still go, they, yeah. they still work. I mean, in this case. I mean, it, you would have gone through the due diligence on the other side too, right? Yeah, I mean, it, so they they streamed 100% of our gold, and they give you the payback of whatever it is, 18% and 22% of our platinum, so less than 5% of our revenue um, for $240 million. I mean, so less than 5% of your revenue? Of revenue. Wow, yeah. that's amazing. So copper is around 30%. Uh, palladium is just over f 50%. Um, platinum is 10%, gold and silver make up the rest. So palladium is getting exciting because I guess with all of this environmental stuff, they're like tripling the amount of... Remember when palladium, palladium went to like 3,000? Uh, I messaged Jamie. I was like, do you think palladium will go to like, will ever stop going up? He's like, I hope not. <laughs> and, then, and, and then that was the top. And then as soon as, Matt, as, soon as I messaged It was Jamie, like was Dark Cloud, <laughs> Dark Cloud <laughs> Wilson. <yeah. laughs> Just ruined it. Ruined it. Sure, it end. was like your no-nos. Hey, Matt, are you pitching a no-no right now? <laughs> Damn there it. it goes. <laughs> there it goes, the end jinxed it yeah yeah no i guess they're putting like th triple the amount in the catalytic converters for the all the environmental i i hear that as well but i mean the the issue is that russia is still producing um Tons. pgm so um it's coming through china there's no sanctions on them i think uh, south africa is going to be more of an issue the power in south africa is escom is really turning it down so i think a lot of the companies have already put out numbers their, their production's down 10 percent um, so let's see what happens to that supply demand. Uh, obviously, we're losing some of the palladium in the uh, the battery electric vehicles. But um, for, for me, I'm not sitting at a gas station and waiting for an hour and a half to get my car it's charged. It's electricity station? Elect electricity station, <laughs> sorry. Whatever Charging station? Whatever. Actually, it's funny. I saw a Tesla yesterday in a gas station. I was like, what are you doing here? 
Oh, yeah. You just buying chips? Maybe he's getting smokes Cigarette. or something. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> chips and cigarettes. Yeah. The, uh, <clears throat> do, do they sell those at uh, Electra's? Do they? Well, I, I don't think so. Probably only green smoothies. Oh, okay. Yeah. Is that what it is? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Matcha teas. This is especially hatred for me now on this. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I. Th- there's lines. There's always these lines. Uh, in BC, every every summer, it's coming back from like the interior of BC to Vancouver, and you have a gas station. Everyone's just ripping through, and then there's the charging state. There's this one like supercharged station, one between like the interior and Vancouver, and there's like yeah. four hours of lines Yay. always every summer, that. anytime after yeah. the weekend. I saw this thing. Uh, um, I should open up an assay bowl stand over there. <laughs> assay, yes, an assay <laughs> bowl stand. <laughs> Which, by the way, are delicious. I, I know, say. They're really good. good. <laughs> I like them too. My wife makes a good what, one. What? Assay bowls? What's that? It's, I have it with my ginger juice. Don't worry. You're going to make fun of me for it. Oh, the ginger <laughs> I juice. I called Matt the other day. I'm like, hey, what's up, man? Good I'm morning. Like, and he's like, oh, just a, just a second here. I'm just getting a ginger uh, a ginger juice here. Isn't it acai? And then Denny's like, yeah, you like, oh, like, yeah, yeah, that was... Akai. Akai. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. Is that better? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, oh, acai. I know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah the berry. Yeah, acai yeah. berry. And the su- super Do you see good, good antioxidants. Yeah. Do you see how they pick those? They're like at po- they're like on palm trees, like right at the top. Yeah, it's very they manual, push- right? You have to climb up, yeah, like all yeah. they climb all, all the way up, and then there's it's not like a big clusters of berries either. It's yeah, like that's a, why they say it's so twigs. expensive. To, yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. Also because they are just they made they're like avocados they're just like this is the marketing we got done mm. it's a great expo expose on avocados on like netflix and they're just like yeah they're good but we really laid in thick in the 90s <laughs> and then everyone believed you needed to have avocados and again i like avocados but yeah i think they did the same thing where did we go where they had remember remember we went somewhere and like the ceo wheeled out avocado toast for all of us so it was like gentlemen welcome to our mind Delicious. Wow, <laughs> that's great. Here's an avocado toast for that's everyone. That's pretty cool. It's almost like breakfast. back to Noron. That's almost like when I went to Noron. It was one of my first site visits ever. It took like two private plane trips and a helicopter ride because the Ring of Fire is so far away. And I land. And the first thing they do is they gave us in this like $700 down vest mm-hmm. embroidered with Noron. And it's just like. That's awesome. At the time, I did not understand. I look back now. I'm like, ah, that's where all the money went. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Short the stock. Short the stock. Short the stock. I saw this thing about the Tesla stations. I saw this thing about batteries. Um, they said that you can get uh, silicon <laughs> instead of carbon, like lithium ion batteries. I guess right now there's a carbon anode and they're going to switch that to like a silicon anode. I guess if you do that, you improve the battery capacity by like something like 30%. Um, but you improve the charging time by like 600%. So you could like charge basically uh, an electric car, which would, would take normally like say 30 minutes. It would ch- charge it in like six minutes. That's cool. I'm sure that there's going to be a lot of technology developments over the next like 10 years. But at the end of the day, we're going to need copper still... for all this. No, silicon. That's yeah, silicon. we are. That's going to no, be our next copper. silicon copper project. part of the charging. It's going to be called Doobie I'm Bay a huge, silicon. huge copper yeah, bowl. If you copper. have a light on, you need copper. Do, you Doobie need Bay copper. silicon. That's the next venture, man, after you sell this. Uh... <laughs> I think one of the stocks in my drawer is called Doobie Capital. Yeah. <laughs> Doobie. <laughs> I think I remember that. I got to go talk to someone about that one. I think that was an early one. That was special. Yeah. I gotta talk to Chris. That for sure came in 2014 yeah, when we were just getting going. No, they, this was like 05, 06, I think. Doobie Capital. Doobie That's a good one. Doobie but Capital. but you know, one of the best site visits I've ever had was uh, uh, Andrew Thompson going down to shoot it Mexico, Saltoro, Saltoro, Guadalajara, and we're driving by there, and I'm like, "What's this region?" And they're like, "Oh, it's the Tequila region." And I'm like, I kind of like tequila. Let's <laughs> stop here. I should. And then we stopped. We picked up some Don Julio 42 before it was ever popular. I'm like, when I think back at that trip, I should have invested in tequila, not mining. <laughs> I would have made a goddamn fortune. Like, because yeah, nobody knew about ripping, it. Was uh, what was it? Julio, well, Don Julio, yeah. whatever it was. It was the only tequila. And then Mezcal like, became a big thing. That's crazy. Huge. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, billionaires are made more billionaires made in tequila probably than mining the past 10 years. I'm sure you got <laughs> earful on that uh, trip. From Andrew? Yeah. <laughs> no comment. <laughs> you didn't have to say from Andrew. <laughs> it's just a subtle thing. No comment. Oh, uh, that's funny. Yep. Okay, oh, so what do guy. we talk about development stories? Guy. So what, what do you want to know about this? Well, let's Cr- talk about generation quickly. Just you know, Yeah, I know we're running not- out of time here. So critical metals. I'm very bullish on them. Okay. Uh, and again, we are we went through the environmental assessment, which could have been the biggest pain in the whatever I, I've ever gone through, but it was a joint review panel, but it was the highest standard of permitting or EA a company goes through. I, this company or our company, Generation Marathon Project, the previous operator, Stillwater, 
in their wisdom in one of their technical reports, let's, as an alternative, let's put the tailings into a lake. Mm. And all of a sudden, DFO, Department of Fisheries of Canada, said they flagged it into this joint review panel. So it was their own stupidity. But when we took over the project, they had a, um, a decision. They, they asked us, do you want to remain in the old permitting or the new permitting? And we asked, what is this new permitting? Well, no one's gone through it yet. So we're like, okay, we'll go through the old permitting, but it's going to take some time. But we ended up doing it. We got it November 30th. Um, and now we're just going through the provincial permits and it, it's amazing right now. And I can just tell you, I have politicians phone Is that number. federal? So Fe it, 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 it was federal, federal joint, yeah. it was joint provincial sure. and federal. Federal basically pulled, you know, they were pre pretty much the, the heavyweights up there, but now going through the provincial permits and we need a couple federal permits. If I need something right now with the critical metals, these politicians will pick up the phone. George Peary, Minister of Mines right now, ex-Breakwater CEO. So it's going really well. It's going really, That's awesome. really well. So is it a critical metal project generation? So it's 30% mm. copper, which is, of course, yes. a critical yeah. metal. What? But does it... So I, I have recently gone through a couple headaches because... People say, well, you don't have over 50% critical metals. Well, I think the platinum group metals are yeah. also critical Are all metals. the PGMs critical as well? Yes, they oh, are. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah they oh, are. I didn't realize that. Yeah, I think I think oh. PGMs are too, yeah. Well, yeah, that's it, awesome. Like, like the palladium for catalytic converters and scrubbers and okay. stuff like that. Yeah. And then platinum is also important for the hydrogen technology that's coming yep. out soon enough. But they say palladium is going to be used for semiconductors and everything else. So, Got What kind it. of role okay. is that platinum going to play in the... In the it's going to be a catalyst for the hydrogen, the fuel oh, okay. cells. Okay. So, I mean, it's, and, and so we're getting very good support on the permitting. So, our hope is we're going to get fully permitted by fourth quarter of this year. And uh, maybe one permit could stretch out into the first quarter of 2024. And then we could really start construction. For, thing, First Nations. That's amazing. First Nations are great. I, okay. you know, it, 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 it's, it's a process and it's a relationship business. And if I could tell you last summer, I played five rounds of golf and I like to play a lot more golf. And that was because there was lots of time sitting with first nation groups, sitting down and discussing. And we got a CBA, which took a little bit of time, but you know, it was definitely worthwhile to have that relationship with the, the, our, our first nation partner, which is Bidigan Nishnabeg, you know, I'll speak to the chief whenever I want or some of the other people. It's just nice to have that relationship. It's their land. It's their exclusive land title. We're on their property. We're going to work. If we're on their land. We're going to work with them. Okay. Are you, um, are you playing up that whole ESG thing too in yours? Cause I saw somebody else do that. Foran. Foran did. Foran did oh, that. Oh man, that's crazy. They're <laughs> like, yeah, our CapEx is a little high. Yeah. We're da 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 da. And uh, CPP came what? into their deal because yeah, of that. Yeah, everybody's like buying into this thing because they vaulted all of that forward. They're like, we're critical this, we're that, we're uh -huh. you know, we're more expensive, but that's okay because we're ESG and yeah. we're responsible and we're and carbon like, neutral. Yeah, like it worked out like yeah. amazing. How do you balance well. that? Because obviously the economics take a. You need to integrate that, man. So it's pretty hard to have a trolley assist when you don't have a ramp. Yeah. So you could figure that. So would we like to go electric trucks? Absolutely. But there are no electric haul trucks. We're going to get 793, so they don't have them right now. So we'll go trolley assist once the ramps are built. We're right on the grid. Um, there's a Manitowoc line that we're going to be tying in it to, but there's another Northwest um, uh, line that there's more than enough power that we could tie in as well. So we're all carbon-free electricity. So that's great. But we are going to have to use diesel. So people that tell you they don't use diesel, they're full of shit. Like, you can't mm. use full electric... Like well, I don't think I think you're still allowed to use diesel. It's yeah. just are you playing it all up like as an ESG oh, we're, we're, we're mine the, of the future? Well, here. we're in the bottom four percent quartile for uh, copper producers amongst the world, so we're one of the lowest uh, producers of carbon in the world. So we're we're definitely there. But ESG funds they don't really invest in developers right now. So okay, so that's what we're getting. I mean, maybe more of a producer, and then you could look at it. But for us right now, um, we're we're going to need uh, different avenues in that. Okay. So permits, construction, yeah. and then actually have a critical metals project in Ontario. Out of, out of curiosity. Oh, sorry. No, 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 the, the government said they wanted to fast track a lot of mines, especially if it's within that critical metals category. Did you feel like they were very supportive of you, or is it still further down the line where they wanted to implement some of this fast tracking? So Minister Peary, George Peary, did a great job. He had roundtables during PDAC before PDAC, before they put the mining act. So he asked all the mining executives from Glencore to to myself, to mm -hmm. Barrick, whoever might have showed up in the meetings, what they could do, what our advice to him. And I think he's trying to do his best, but there, 
still a lot of civil servants and bureaucrats sitting at Queen's Park and all over Ontario and all over um, Canada that control certain things. So the politicians can say something, mm. but it's very hard yeah. for them to actually change what's been taking so long. So sure, they can help, and they are helping us out a lot, but we're already past that permitting stage that they're trying to fast track. And I hope it, it I'm a Canadian and I want more minds to happen in Canada, but I, I still see um, it, it's going to be a process. There's a lot of policy and a lot of red tape that needs to get clean before it gets expedited. Mm. So that's just going to put a lot more pressure on supply. Yes. It's gonna oh, yes, for revenue. sure. I mean, the ring of fire, for instance, I mean, I think we're a long ways off from that getting built. I mean, I hope it gets built, but I mean, that CapEx, I mean, our CapEx is here. What's there is going to be. There's no power. There's no road. There's no rail. Like, how do you get the concentrate out? A really long road. <laughs> <laughs> that you, and then you have to get a bunch of First That's Nations a lot. and a, a lot, lot of groups. First Nations on yeah, side. For so. sure. A lot of metal um, up there, though. Yeah, so, there is. So if, okay, so let's just ask this question. So that aside, if you were to invest in a company right now that's not your own company, do you have one that you've like that you like that you think would be a good idea, or or you, like, you know it doesn't have to be a specific name, but specific name I'm, I'm sure people would like. But Generation Mining, <laughs> yeah, only aside I, from I, a Generation. No, no, I'm, I just actually bought more shares today, yeah. and so like as Matt said, mentioned earlier, drinking the Kool Aid, I'm drinking the Kool Aid. Got it. Like we're trading at 100 million market cap, our MPV is a billion. I think commodity prices are higher. I have some extra cash lying around. Wife, don't listen to this phone because um, <laughs> she'll tell me that I keep buying it. But I'm, I'm, I, I'm in deep, and you know I'm going to go down with a sinking ship, or I'm going to make a fortune. But this is, I uh, this is my, um, my hopeful my retirement fund. I think this is the best project I have seen. We have the metals needed for the future, and I'm a believer. There are other deals out there that I like. But this, to me, is the cheapest deal I've seen. Supposed to say Earth Labs, man. Earth Labs, Earth Labs. <laughs> are, they, are, are you public? Yeah, we're public. What's the symbol? Spot. Okay, I'll buy that. Oh. <laughs> okay, but that was the old company. You should yeah, change the name. Same. No, but the, the that ticker, that ticker oh, okay. is cool. It's a long debate. Is it okay? <laughs> it should be like E Labs or something, or E Lab or whatever. There's too many labs out Lab. there already. Yeah, Spot. Why? why like it's, it's that ticker's the best. But it's, yeah, this is the best. Our name is not. Yeah, I know it's okay. It's <laughs> yeah. We probably get some residual buying from the Spotify investors. Like yeah. Spotify. Yeah, <laughs> like, like looking up damn it, price. I thought I was an, <laughs> I thought I was buying an American. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well that's great, man. It's always good. I, I think that it's drinking your own Kool-Aid. I mean it's 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 you For know sure. if, if you're if you're not doing that, if you're not doing that, then first of all, what are you doing? Because you obviously have lots of options and things to do. So mm -hmm. it's like you don't want to I I find that the more I guess the longer I've been around, you see like people who know what they're doing and it's like why that you get to choose what you do, right? So you're choosing to do this, like you, you know, and so it's, it's great that, you you say, well, you know, that's, that's why you would drink your drink the Kool Aid because you're like, yeah, because it's great. That's why I'm doing it. That's why good management teams are, are good management teams because they know the the things that are worthwhile doing. Yeah, you also get a sense of your stock too. You're like, like you you get your value attribution. You get where you're like what you're supposed to be worth, and then you're like, okay, well, there's clearly a disparity from. Yeah. And then you get a confidence too that everybody doesn't see, which in the and I do like to do my set A filings and then I looked at like to look at CO.ca and say, Oh my god, the CEO's <laughs> buying again. <laughs> buying. Why are not, and buying. that's not why that's not why I'm doing it. But it is nice to see that sort of recognition that the people, yeah, people are noticing. The, the investors are happy that yeah, I'm buying, sure. but I'm not doing it because I don't need to do it for for them, but I'm doing it because if I'm sitting with cash, maybe I should pay off my mortgage or maybe I should pay off my credit cards. But sometimes I see value in buying this because I know I can't sell it. Mm -hmm. The only time I can sell it is if we get taken out or if we actually start to build it and I have an exit somewhere. But I'm thinking it's a it, it's a good investment at this time. And, you know, I love hearing other investments like I'm still I still own every share of a Cisco Metals, which is uh, the last company that we sold Pine Point to Cisco. I think they got a great project. Pine Point, they, I think they sold most of it or 70%. I'm not even too sure how much they sold to Appian, but their Gas Bay Copper project is a great looking project. Bob Wares is one of the smartest guys I know. I trust Bob and the whole Cisco group is great. Mm -hmm. Have some of Cisco mining. I think they, deal, they did the deal. A lot of people were skeptical about the deal that uh, John pulled off with uh, Windfall. Uh, with Windfall was a gold field. So we talked about that on the phone. I was, I was all right. I'm all right. I'm all right with it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, got 900 million it. in the bank. What's wrong with that? <laughs> for sure. Yeah. <laughs> for sure. You know, it's getting built now. Yeah, for sure. That's it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So 
What is 900 million times 5%? I guess that's a lot interest to you, right? <laughs> How do you make $45 million? Well, you just put 900 million in the bank. <laughs> so they're doing pretty good on that. So, yep. Okay. So there we go. So, anything else we want to discuss? No, just thank that's you really for having great, me. Man. I'd love to come back. Good this to see you again. Really come back. Let's chat. Yeah, let's chat. Let's chat when I get to build this. Or you guys get up for a site visit or something. That'd be cool. Yeah. Bring the cameras. Do some fishing. All right. Do you, guys Do you have any with? like rare, any rare fish close to you that like <laughs> don't answer? Spawning beds. Don't answer that. Don't answer that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I fish at Pusateri. So I don't know how to fish. So <laughs> I don't know. I how the to flays <laughs> always come up perfectly. <laughs> wow, a unicorn trout. These are only exist in one lake in the whole world. And if you mine PGMs anywhere close to them, <laughs> yeah. oh dude, oh, I'll try to get. I'll try to get you a moose tag. How about that? You can go hunt some moose. There you you go. Pr- you'd probably be mo- more of that now. Yeah, and like, we're up I in like then in like Newfoundland. There's lots of moose going on around oh, Newfoundland. Are you, are you allowed to shoot them, or do you need a tag? You need a tag. No, you need a tag. No, you, you need, need a tag. tag. Yeah. yeah, you need a tag. Okay. You need a tag. Everywhere. For sure. Yeah. Yep. Well, thanks for having me, right, guys. Buddy. This Thank was you. great. Good to see you, man. Thanks, no, this thanks was great. great. I appreciate it. Yep. Okay. Thank you. All right.